Here we are with the September 30th video talking about the multivariable equivalent of the chain rule. Now when I was in school, in particular when I was in undergrad, the chain rule had quite uh, the infamous reputation among my classmates uh, because we would we would all anytime there was an error anytime we made a mistake somehow we could we could bring it back to chain rule and so it became a running joke like oh chain rule burned my house down chain rule is why I can't pay my rent chain rule is why my girlfriend broke up with me you know chain rule was the source of all our problems not just mathematical but also in life you know so we're going to talk today about chain rule goals for today are to create a tree diagram for compositions or functions of multiple variables and to use that tree diagram together with the chain rule to calculate derivatives and partial derivatives of functions of more than one variable. Okay, let's go ahead and get started talking about this tree diagram business. And for an example, let's consider a function f and the two input variables of the function f are u and v. Now f depends on u and v, but u and v in turn depend on other things. u depends on the value of two other quantities, which are being called s and t. v depends only on the value of s, but does not care about t at all. So we're going to draw something called a tree diagram that shows how all these different variables are interconnected. So to begin with, let's draw the function f at the top. Let's draw the function f at the top. Now f is a function of u and v. So I'm going to draw branches down from this tree, one leading to the first dependency, u, and the other leading to the second dependency, v. Now u, in turn, depends on s and t. So I'm going to draw two more branches down, one going to the dependency s, the other going to t, and finally v is a function of s alone. So I'm going to draw a line down to s, but it doesn't depend on t, so the branch, I won't draw a t branch there. Now our tree diagram is also decorated with partial derivatives. The branch from f to u is decorated with the partial derivative of f with respect to u. So the quantity on the top of this line represents the numerator of the partial derivative. The quantity on the bottom of this line represents the denominator of the partial derivative. Over here as well, f on top, v on the bottom, we would decorate this line with the partial derivative f over v. This line from u to s will be decorated with partial u, partial s. This one partial u, partial t. And here dv, ds. We don't necessarily need to use a partial here because v doesn't have any other variables that it depends on. So this is technically not a partial derivative, this is just a regular derivative, since v is only a function of one variable. This object that we have created is a tree diagram for the dependencies in this problem. f depends on u and v. The rate of change of f in the u direction is given by this product here, this partial here. u depends on s and t, and the rates of change are noted on the lines and likewise in the v direction. Now, now that we know how to draw tree diagrams, we're going to use them to calculate things like what is the partial derivative of f with respect to s? If f changes as u changes, and u changes as s changes, then any change in s is going to cause, go all the way back up, any change in s is going to cause a corresponding change in the value of f. So the question is, what is the rate of change of f as you change this lower tier variable s, and it works its way through u and v. 
We could also ask ourselves the question, what happens to the fellow at the top of the tree, F, as we change this quantity, T? How would we calculate something like that? So that's what chain rule is here to help us to do. Let's describe how that would go. The chain rule for compositions of multiple functions, multivariable functions. Whenever you're trying to answer a question like, what is dfds, what is dfdt, in a situation as described above, the very first thing that you do is create a tree diagram. Show all the dependencies between all the different variables in the problem and decorate the lines connecting them with partial derivatives. Create a tree diagram. Now, after that is done, find all paths from the top variable in your partial to the bottom variable. Let me demonstrate what I mean. Suppose that I was interested in figuring out what was going on with DFDS. Here's the tree diagram that I've constructed, and I would think, what are all the ways that I could get from F at the top to an S at the bottom? Well, there's one path which goes by way of U, and there's another path which goes by way of S. So, what I would do, I'm a little bothered by the fact that that enclosed the partial. So I'm going to be funny and I'm going to, I'm going to redraw that. I would consider the two different paths that I could take from F on the top of the partial that I'm trying to figure out and S on the bottom of the partial. That's step two of chain rule. Step three, for each path, from step two. So go one by one, looking at each path one at a time, multiply together the partial derivatives that are decorating the path. So going back up to our example, if I'm still interested in the case of dfds, then I'm going to look at the two paths that bring me from f to s. Now, the left path, as I travel down the path, the first thing that I counter is dfdu. So I'm going to take dfdu, that partial that I met along the path, and as I continue along the path, I encounter the decoration du ds. So I'm going to multiply those two paths together, those two partials together. For the right path, the path which goes by way of v instead of u, the first partial I encounter, decorating the first line here, is partial f partial v. The second is dv ds. So I'll multiply together the two partials on that path. Okay, so that concludes step three. Look amongst all your paths that you highlighted from step number two, and look at all the decorations on those paths, and go ahead and multiply those partials together. Step four, this is the final step, is to add the products from step three. Add the products from step three, and that's the last part of the problem. It says, okay, if you want to calculate the rate of change of f with respect to x, with respect to s, rather, 
the first thing that you need to do is you have to account for the change that's coming from the u direction. s is changed, that changes u, changing u changes f. So you get a little rate of change from that direction. And then combine that with the change that comes from the v direction. Changing s changes v. Changing v also changes f a little bit. Now put those two changes together and you'll get the overall effect of s on the output of the function. This is chain rule for multivariable functions. It's not so much a formula uh, because it's next to impossible to get a single formula that covers all possible cases for multivariable functions. But it is a process that can be used to create your own formula that's appropriate for your problem. It first create a tree diagram, then highlight all the different paths from top variable to bottom, multiply the products of partials on each path, and then add those products together. Four step process. Now just for exercise, let's try it for the t variable as well. And this one is much simpler, I think, because there's only one way to get from f to t, and that's by way of u. v doesn't depend on t at all. So if I look at the partials that I encounter going from f to u to t, then I get df du du dt. Now, there was no dependency coming from the v branch, so there are no other rates of change to add. And so all in total, this is the rate of change of f as t varies. Goes by way, changing u, and u in turn changes f. All right, so this is the chain rule in practice. I think we have actually solved this example write down expressions for dfds and dfdt that come from applying the chain rule. This is exactly the same example as was on the front page. So we have done that on the front page. If you're reading these notes later, we've done that on the front page.